Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jerusalem Grand Prix 2019. It's Maxim Vashela Grab versus Veselin Topalov. Uh, two of their classical games have been drawn and today we are going into the tiebreak so they will be playing two rapid games. This is the first game of the rapids and uh, Maxim uh, chooses a very nice line. Two of them already played, well not, it's not that Maxim chose it, uh, both of them go into it. Two of them already played this game in the 2016 Norway Championship and then uh, Maxim takes a different approach to, to the position. So uh, we do have one photo again, courtesy of Nikki Riga, uh, official photographer of the FIDE Grand Prix. So let's just enjoy it for a second. There you have it. Uh, it's from the classical game where Veselin had the white pieces. Uh, we don't uh, have the photos from the Rapid yet, but, uh, you know, just to get in the mood. And other than the fact that uh, Veselin didn't bring any refreshments to the game, there really isn't anything odd about this photo. So let's just, uh, uh, you know, in enjoy it. Uh, that being said, let's check out the game. So, like I said, uh, the two of them already played this game. We have e4, uh, e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. The Ruy Lopez is on the board. Knight f6, uh, Topalov goes for the Berlin defense. We have castles, and now knight captures on e4. So, we already covered this line, uh, I, don't, I don't know how many times. Knight d6, uh, bishop captures, d captures, and now d captures on e5. The early queen trade is on the board. Knight f5, queen captures, king captures, and now h3. And here, the most uh, common move here is king to e8, but uh, here, for this game, Topalov chooses the line he already played against Maxim in the 2016 Norway Championship, bishop to d7, uh, we have rook to d1, and now bishop to e7. So, all, all, all seen before, uh, when black plays uh, the Berlin, g4, pushing the knight back, and now knight to h4. White trades, knight captures, bishop captures, and now knight to d2. The knight will now come to f3 to take the place of the other knight and kick away the bishop back to e7. So here we have king to c8. You don't want the king on, on the same uh, file here. And this is, again, usual stuff in the Berlin defense. You want to play b7, uh, b6 and c5. Uh, clear the light squares for your light square bishop. And maybe put the king on b7 and get the rook into the game. Knight to f3, pushing the bishop back, bishop to e7, and now uh, we get to the position that two of them already had in Norway in 2016, where Maxim played bishop to d3, that game ended in a draw. But here Maxim goes bishop to g5, he offers a trade of dark square bishops, it's not a new move, it has been be played before, but it's uh, hard to say if Topalov is, uh, uh, you know, uh, familiar with the position. So Topalov uh, declines the trade, bishop to c5. Uh, we have rook to d3 now and b6. Here, bishop to e6 is again a known move. Peter Leko played it against Michael Adams in, the two, in 2014 in, in Dortmund. Uh, that game also ended in a draw, but here we have b6 and it is a new move in the, in the position. So as of move, move 16, we have a completely new game. So, bishop back to e3, Maxim again offers a trade, uh, we have bishop captures now, uh, you could bring it back to e7, but here Topalov decides to trade, bishop captures, uh, and now rook captures, at least you get the rook away from the d file, because it, it might be problematic if white just uh, is able to double up so quickly on the d file. With h6 taking away the g5 square from uh, Maxim's knight and now rook to d1 and c5. The plan has been achieved, b6, c5, you clear this diagonal for the light square bishop. And now knight to h4. Now Maxim's plan is either he's gonna create a lot of problems for black when, when he brings the knight uh, over to, uh, to, to f5 and... Uh, uh, or or black will have to give up the light square bishop because if this uh, bishop gets on this diagonal it will be a very useful piece. Now it is possible to prevent the knight from going to f5 by playing g6 but then you will have problems defending the f7 pawn when this rook comes to f3. So here after g, uh, we have g5, uh, Topalov even forces the knight to f5 and now he captures it. And this is the moment uh, uh, from the thumbnail. So here there are different options possible like bishop to e6. Uh, just get the bishop out of the way, add, add another defender to the uh, f7 pawn. The problem is after knight to g7 you will still have to give up the e6 bishop. It's really not possible to defend it. You cannot capture on a2. If you capture it, then just b3 and your bishop is trapped. Rook a1 will just pick it up. 
Uh, and uh, if you ret retreat with something like bishop to d7, then again, rook f3 is very strong. You will have problems defending this. And now you have to repeat again and now give up your bishop. Uh, rook f8 uh, loses to just e6, captures, captures, and now you will not be able to recapture uh, or you lose the rook on f8. So it's uh, a very interesting moment where bishop to e6 is the best move, but you have to allow knight to g7 and then uh, just knight captures on e6. Uh, there, there's no way around it. So this is uh, what you should do. However, Topolov decided to play bishop captures on f5. We have g captures on f5. And now not only do you allow white to, to very easily create a pass pawn here, but also white has a very clear uh, plan what to do. White just wants to play king g2 to f3 to g4 to h5. And then if black uh, does not want to part with the h6 pawn, this rook pretty much has to stay here and guard the h6 pawn. So king b7 by Topolov. Uh, prepares to bring the other rook into the game. King g2. Now Maxim starts uh, the king march. Uh, we have rook 8 to d8 and Maxim just trades. Rook captures, rook captures and now king to f3. Uh, the next part of the plan is, well, uh, about to be realized. We have c4 and now comes rook to e4. You don't want to allow uh, the rook to harass you after, uh, after you go king to g4. We have b5 by Topalov and now king to g4. King to c8 and now e6. Even better. If you go king h5, you go into a race saying that I'm going to grab your pawns sooner than you can clear all of my pawns. Uh, but Maxim says, nope, uh, let's just go e6 without giving black any time to consolidate. We have f captures on e6, f captures. And now rook to h8, uh, preparing to defend the h6 pawn with the rook. But uh, now king to f5. We have king to d8 and now... Uh, Maxim just plays e7 with check, king to e8, and here king to g6. And believe it or not, uh, it was in this position that Veselin Topol resigned the game. And uh, this is exactly why I wanted to show you this game, because it's just, it's just very impressive how... Uh, how easily uh, MVL accomplished a winning endgame and how, how Topolov uh, decided that uh, the winning endgame was actually was in fact not winning for uh, for MVL, uh, but it was. So uh, we're going to discuss this position a bit more uh, in a second, but after this knight to f5 move, you cannot capture this and allow this. This just this just gives white uh, too, too easy of a game to play. Even if it wasn't objectively winning, it's too easy to play for white. And it, this is exactly what happened. Uh, this is move 22 and the game ended on move 36. So really, really quick. So uh, not, not, it's just not, not possible to play this endgame. Especially with the king still being here, you still have to waste a few moves to get the rook into the game. Uh, but yeah, the reason why after king to g6, uh, Topolo resigned is uh, you cannot allow king g7. This just traps the rook. The rook will be without a square and doesn't really matter what you play here. If you go rook g8 check, king h7 and now king to f7, uh, then e8 queen just uh, goes into a winning endgame for white. Captures, captures, captures. After king captures on h6, you're going to grab this pawn. And then, of course, the two pass pawns are winning the black pawns on the... Black pawns on the queen side will be much too slow, and also the king can easily help out if needed because uh, the uh, the two pass pawns on the king side will be unopposed. And on the other hand, after king to g6, if you try something like king d7 to try and get your rook into the game, still doesn't really matter. King g7, rook e8, and now king to f7. You just defend the pawn. Uh, c5 or any other move by black doesn't really matter, rook e1. And the next move you're just gonna go rook d1 check, either the king moves and you pick up the rook or the rook moves, uh, but still, now you just go e8 queen and it's just a, a nice Jan Gustafsson endgame where one player has a rook and the other one doesn't, of course completely winning for MVL. So really impressive stuff and MVL gets one step closer to his uh, spot in the candidates which eluded him for, for so long. And I don't know if we'll be able to cover the other game of the Rapids between the two of them. Uh, but just in case we don't, uh, MVL also won that game. So Topalov is eliminated from the uh, Jerusalem FIDE Grand Prix 2019. And Maxim, uh, you know, uh, proceeds further in into the competition. Uh, there are some other games. I've seen some very interesting games and uh, I hope to cover them all. So that's why I said I don't know if I'll be uh, have time to cover the second game, even though I do think it's interesting. But if it's really interesting, I will cover it. That's that's how it goes. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. You know, don't go into uh, uh, an end game like this. Seems like, especially if you're if you're a Berlin player, then you should know that this is really bad for you. 
Uh, I would like to thank uh, Matteo Bruno, Johnny Adams, uh, Dananje uh, Baradvaj, uh, Carlos Carranza and Paul Bo uh, Boynton for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix 2019, the final leg of the competition, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, as usual, uh, checking up on whatever happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and do be a part of the subscribers video. See you soon.